But anyway, that's, that's the back story. Uh, we're not going to worry about that so far. So who's at CSS Cons? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay, you guys can go to sleep. Uh, yeah, th that's the thing. I have no idea how I'm going to fit a half an hour talking to 15 minutes, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just um, probably cover the first part of it, and the second part, you guys can look at the video. Anyway, uh, who knows about SVGs and SVG animations? CSS, SML, okay, fine. Let's go, let's go from the beginning. Hey, I'm Zell. Uh, I wrote the books for the record. Uh, this is me on my website. Freaking long name, I have no idea what I'm thinking. I'm gonna change it soon. Uh, so, slides for this is on this link, as you can see. Uh, basically, the overview will be some simple SVG stuff, the, the simple ones. We're gonna go into basic animations and some, something slightly more complex. I don't think we have the time to do the cool real world usage though, so please check out the, the video. So, basically, the basics. Whoa. Why SVG? Because it has good browser support, it's startable, and what I love it is that it's scalable. So you don't have to worry about being pixelized. There are a few ways of using SVGs, like the image tag, the background image pattern. Uh, using it as an object, which I don't see anyone using anymore, I think. Then the last one, which I love, which is inline SVG. Uh, there are a lot of others, but we won't be covering that. The, the main one to use if you are going to animate it is to use inline SVGs because that's the, that's the only one that allows you to use any kind of animation methods and it will still work. All right, so quickly, animation methods. There are three animation methods, CSS, SMIL, and JavaScript. Browser support, that's the first thing everyone asks. If you are using CSS animations, you can go back up to IE9. As long as transitions or animations are supported, you're fine. SMIL, you can't use it in, uh, in uh, Internet Explorer or Opera Mini. So if you, have, if you have to support those browsers, then please don't use SMIL. Otherwise, use JavaScript. Uh, probably not, so not supposed to talk about it in a CSS meetup, but I will, I will cover that. So basically, the, the initial part will be translations and rotations. Uh, I'd just like to show you the difference between the two, because rotation is a lot more complex in SVG compared to normal HTML elements. All right, this is the SVG that we're using. It's basically the rectangle you see over here without any um, animations. I'm not going to go into code pen, so. Animating with S CSS. You want to use CSS animations when it's simple for you to animate, when you don't have a lot of complex timing functions, and you want to animate properties that only CSS can animate, especially when using SVGs. One of the properties that CSS cannot animate, for example, is the path property, the D property in SVGs. We'll talk about that later if we have time. Anyway, targeting SVGs. Um, you can target the normal SVG element just like the div thing, and it works. If it's just the SVG element, then you treat it like a normal HTML element. But you can also target the items within the SVG by just saying SVG rect, basically however you target normal tag elements. The, the, how they behave, though, is totally different from um, HTML elements. So let's take a look at a simple one, tra translations, move from left to right. Basically, if you say transform 100 pixels, which, is, which basically you guys should know, not too much of a problem. You can also use um, animations. In addition to translations, the only thing is to use the keyframe syntax but when it comes to rotation, all hell breaks loose. If you say, rotate 360 degree, and then if you take a look at my mouse and how it rotates, it goes out of the box and it comes back again. So what this is happening is that for SVGs, right, it actually animates around this origin point on the top left corner. But for normal div elements, it animates like the center point of the element itself, which is why this is slightly confusing. One way to fix it is to set the transform origin to 50%, 50%. And it works perfectly fine in Chrome in, and in uh, IE and Safari. But this breaks in Firefox. Because Firefox doesn't allow you to use percentages transform origin. If you want to, you have to use pixels, which uh, I don't think we want to use it anyway. So that's the basics for CSS. And now let's go on to SMIL. SMIL is when you want to use simple animations again, because complex, anim 
complex animations will take a hell out of you. And you need more control compared to CSS. Because CSS, you can only trigger animations on hover or with the keyframes. With SMIL, you can use things like click or click plus one second or some other thing animate, wait for how many seconds, then this thing animates again. So this is one of the benefits of using SMIL. And if you need IE or Opera Mini support, please don't use SMIL. You're going to kill yourself. Uh, the way to use SMIL animations is to use the animate tag. You can use it in either one of the two ways, meaning put the animate tag within the SVG element itself, or you can use an ID and link to it. So the basic animate tag has four attributes. The attribute name, which is the thing that you're going to animate, the from, and to, and the duration. OK? So SML translation. Here we're going to translate x, which is the, the x value on the left to right from 50 to 150 at one second when I click on it. So this is how it works. You can click any number of times, and the, the animations will repeat by itself. There is also a second way of animating SVG elements, and that's with the Animate Transform tag. So this Animate Transform tag uses uh, the translation thingy, like almost like CSS transforms, to, to transform the, to, to transform the the box. So you use the attribute name as transform, and this will give you a new type of translate. Then you'll say x and y to x and y, duration, and begin, and stuff like that. OK, basically, it's going to be the same. And in rotation, well, once again, this, is, this time around, we are going to use type rotate. But once again, you're going to have the same problem of it animating outside of the box because it's going to animate around the top left corner again. How we can fix this is to set the origin point by calculating it yourself to, say, 100 and 100, which is the center of this SVG box over here. And now if you click it, it rotates. But of course, you can't use it on IE or Opera Mini. So if you want to rotate SVG elements, please use JavaScript, even though this is a CSS meetup. Yeah. Um, if you want to do more than one animation, you have to use more than one animate tag, because each animate tag only supports one property. So let's say if you want to do a, a change of color, you have, to, you have to add the second animate tag, then begin with a specific ID, like rotate, and you select begin. <laughs> Stupid grammar. Yeah, begin, rotate, and things like that. So you, if you imagine you have a lot of different animations, then your whole HTML document will be super duper long. OK. Uh, thirdly, animating with JavaScript. So you use JavaScript for complex animations and you, and you need to support all browsers, and especially rotating SVGs, which is a pain in the ass. So anyway, uh, libraries you can use are GreenSock, uh, GSAP, or SnapSVG. They are more than that, but these are the two that are widely recommended. I'm going to use GSET because the animation uh, method is a lot easier than Snap SVG. So adding GSET. The syntax for GSET is twinmax dot the method, then your elements, the duration, and the destination properties. So let's just say, for example, here is that we're going to animate the rectangle such that the x goes from 50 to 100. It's just like this. So you just say attribute to. This attribute over here is how GSAP does SVG. Otherwise, you can just say X and you will do a transform, translate, uh, translate X. On rotation, if you just say rotation 360, it's going to go slightly different from everyone else. It rotates along its own origin, which is kind of funny. But the good thing is that you can add transform origin 50 50% and it will rotate around the center. Now, let's say if you need to for some reason, rotate around some point in the SVG element. You can set the SVG origin. Right now, we're setting it to the bottom right, and it goes to the bottom right. So this is something that other, other uh, methods can't do. So rotation with JavaScript is the best, has the best support so far. Uh, more complex animations. Basically, what we're doing is this, the basketball bouncing thing. And in tribute to Hui over here. So, the things you see is that there are three things happening over here. Translating X, moving from left to right, you have bouncing up and down, and then you have the basketball rotating. 
So the SVG is uh, is basically you have a lot of paths. I'm not gonna go in the code pen because it's gonna take too long. So what you're gonna do is that the paths over here, the three paths over there, are the th are the paths like you see over here, which is very long. Then you have to set different uh, classes so that each each class can rotate one aspect of the ball. So then we are going to do animations with like ball X, ball Y, and ball rotate. Each one will do one of its job. And it's not too difficult to do the animation thing. You just have to say like transform or rotate for X and rotation. The hard part comes when you have to like bounce the whole thing. Because in CSS, there's no easing called bounce. You have to set the, the, the keyframes with the timing functions and then calculate the, the, the height that it's supposed to be at which is kind of interesting and hard. Then you'll get something like this. Wait till you did all this just by throwing basketball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's like this code nonsense? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I just use gravity. <laughs> <laughs> See, so anyway, in SML, you, ha you have to use basically the same thing because you can't do it simply. But instead of classes, you're going to use IDs. So you can use the animate tag to, to target each of these IDs. So ball x transform 0 to 600 rotation will be like around the origin point of 50 50 otherwise you have some problems then the animate tag which is kind of difficult basically what it's saying is that the values will be 0 300 150 300 the kind of bouncing values and you have to set the key times at where these values occur it's kind of like the css thing then you have to set the key splines which is the animation timing function this is like easy in, is out, easy in, is out, easy in, is out, easy in, that kind of thing. So using this is like horror story. So if you have to do something like this, please don't use SMIL. <laughs> can, can we do that later after the whole thing stops? Like, yes, Q&A later. So basically, it's going to be the same thing, OK? But if you're going to use JavaScript, we can use it simply, especially with um, uh, GSET. Just one class of saying ball would do. Then you can say, X, uh, transform X to 600 pixels, rotate 720 degrees around its own origin. And with an easing that you can straight away use, then the Y value will be easing bounce. And that's, you get this immediately without, without so much code. So this is like the simplest one. The only problem is that you have to use JavaScript, but yeah. Oh, we managed to get to here. So like cool ribble effects are, Line drawing and shape morphing. I don't know how much time we have left, but line drawing is something like this. If you remember the PS4 polygon animation, that's one of the coolest things about line drawings. And you can do it with, uh, it's hard to do it with CSS, so you have to do it with JavaScript anyway. But I'm going to demonstrate how this line drawing thing works, then tell you what JavaScript libraries you can use to make it easier for you. Basically, you need a path with a line like this with the D attribute, which is the path thing. And this thing has to have a width, uh, a stroke. And that's, the, that's the basic minimum part. <sighs> okay, So you have to set the dash array. Then after that, you have to translate the dash offset so it moves like this. Then you have to make the stroke longer, which kind of makes it the other way. So you have to do it the other way around and mix it, which makes it the correct way. Uh, so summary, the, you have to set the dash array and dash offset to the length of the path which is kind of hard to do in CSS because you have to like uh, try and error kind of things like that. So you can use things like Vivas.js, which allows you to do multiple paths at the same time. Or you can use GSET or Segment, which is basically a free plugin, free thing that works the same way as Draw SVG. And you can animate the path from anywhere, like even in the center to the edges. Okay, cool. Then Shape Morphing basically is going like doyao. And you need, the two things you need over here is that the the number of points in the starting path and the ending path must be the same. So what do I mean by um, points? So if you take a look at this M over here and there's this S over here, these are points on the path. When you do shape morphing, you have to make sure the two points are the same. <sighs> OK, no more time. So two ways to do this. You can use the GSAP SVG morph, uh, morph SVG plugin, which is paid, or you can use Snap. GSAP basically. Uh, GSET native doesn't allow you to do that simply. So you can do it with like saying a start path and an end path in GSET, then morph it to the end path, then morph it back to the start path when it's done. 
this is how it looks like. Sorry, I got no time to go into the code. Um, the cool thing about GSAP is that you can morph any any number of points. You can go from a circle to a rhinoceros, bang to a star, and go into some elephant shape. And these points are complex. It's not doable in any other way other than this morph SVG plugin, which is if you want to buy it, it's totally awesome. But if you are cheap and like me, don't want to pay money, then you have to use SVG, uh, Snap SVG, which uh, say what's this, uh, the same path, then set the starting and ending path, then if you have animate first. With this Mina easing, which is like the snap SVG easing thingy. Okay, so this is like the start, and then you have to, after the start, you have to go back to the original path with some uh, elastic easing in, which allows you to, to get the toyong yong yong effect. And yeah, shape morphing summary, pass must have the same number of points on this to use morph SVG. And that's the end, yay! <laughs> Good job. Who has animation questions? SVG animation questions. I was just wondering if uh, with Smell you, had, you could dynamically generate the and with SVG you could you had tools to just generate the path better. Uh huh. So that, I mean, because I mean, with JavaScript you're obviously using a library which is a, a level of abstraction, which is great. I mean, I I love JavaScript, but when you're using SVG and Smell, you're actually using uh, browser technology directly, which is a good thing. So, are there any sort of tools to make it easier to generate? Well, I don't think there are any tools to make it easier to generate paths. So, what you're saying is that like creating the shapes, right? Generating yeah. the paths. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, you probably don't want to write the path yourself, like yeah. in there. Okay. So basically, you use things like Sketch or Illustrator, some vector thing to help you draw. And you export it, and then you have to like um, clean it up yourself after after exporting it. Okay. Yeah, for that right, Illustrator is much better than Sketch when it comes to exporting cleaner SVGs. So you might want to look at Illustrator. Just the only problem is that I don't know how to use it. <laughs> what about Inkscape? Sorry, what about Inkscape? haven't used Inkscape. Sorry, I can't comment on that. Okay, awesome. Anyone else? Uh, what are the performance considerations for SVG? Sorry? Are there any performance considerations? Not that I know of. I mean, traditionally, it's all very bad. It's worse than normal. What do you mean by traditionally, it's not very bad? It's all very bad. I mean, in kind of animation, <laughs> there's a danger of too much. SVG is pretty native for the most yeah. part. Yeah. So, so it's because it's quite native, it's quite fast. fast. Usually, there, there isn't any problems with animating. It's, it's kind of like animating DOM elements. The danger here is that if you add too many animations, then it's going to start lagging a few. Then if you're, st if you're starting to animate it, um, well, it's, this is one, uh, how I put it? This is one debate that's going on like forever between CSS and JavaScript animations. They always say, CSS is better. And then someone says, JavaScript is better. Oh, sorry. So, there, there's this ongoing debate that you can have a look. I think uh, it's, on, it's on CSS Tricks, where the author of GSAP wrote an article about comparing the performance metrics on, on animating with CSS and animating with uh, GSAP. Might be worth a look, but generally speaking, I think both are fine, as long as you don't animate the properties that forces repaint. Like, so try to use like, transform, opacity, and things like that, and not width and height, for example. Should be fine. Basically, what, like with animation, you'll get things. Like if you try to use jQuery to animate, it's generally bad. Uh, if you try no. to use any library to do anything, then don't. Um, so you stick with the things that are already reasonably quick. After that, you get into the basic principles for design. If you're trying to write something for a um, PlayStation 4, you need to know what the limitations are of the hardware and the software. So even though, so you start yourself off at that reasonably fast point. So, you know, no jQuery. Um, from there, it's just down to what the hardware limitations are. But as long as you just give yourself that head start by using the proper things, SVG animation, for example, um, then, you know, it's not that bad. You can still ruin it if you try, but, you know, I always ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What's uh, Simon Swain use for his? Uh, acid, I think. What, what, what no, methods? Oh, you didn't mean why he talks about it.
<laughs> well, I have to, well, I have to talk like twice the speed. Oh, okay. Canvas, canvas, canvas. Canvas, okay. Oh, canvas. So there you go. So even canvas is quick if it's... Yeah. Uh, or you can use WebGL. Yeah, but again, you still... You make sure you've got that reasonable base before you go crazy. Yeah. If you, if you want to challenge, you can debug my CSS configuration website and see why it's sometimes <laughs> it when you try to go in and sometimes it doesn't. If you find a developer who wrote that, then... I've, I've <laughs> spent hours trying to figure out why sometimes it blinks and sometimes it doesn't. It seems to be some memory swap between like normal memory and GPU memory or something that sometimes happens and sometimes not. Happens. There's another question over that way. Oh. I just have a comment, like, from my experience, as long as you're animating less than a thousand DOM elements, um, that is fine. So, uh, if you're using above a thousand, or ten thousands, or hundred of thousands, then, uh, you know, SVG may not be the best choice. So, uh, for example, it's the D3JS, which, of course, animates SVG. Um, the Mike Bostock has an example which actually has a canvas wrapper around it. So if you are animating like a thousand objects, then you may want to use canvas wrapper instead of animating SVG because that would create a lot of reflows and your browser may actually just hang. That's the pro, just listen to him. On the question along the lines, it also have something to do with how large the elements are because I know that the browsers render in like squares that are about like one sixth of your desktop. And they have these retained squares.